Welcome to this Vibe Pro tutorial. In this video, I'll be going through all the features found in Vibe Pro for iPad. I'm not gonna be hooked up to an actual accelerometer, but we'll be going through the features and explaining what everything does. Uh, the first part is the About page. Uh, this will tell you the version number, and you'll be able to uh, check out some useful links at the top left here, such as our website, our web app, uh, some case histories done with Vibe Pro, and links to the user manual in a variety of languages. So this is the About screen, some uh, our phone numbers on the bottom there as well. Uh, the Help screen is a built-in version of our manual for Vibe Pro. It goes through all the features page by page, over 41 pages. I, it's a pretty helpful thing to look through as well in addition to watching this video. Uh, now onto Settings. Uh, the first setting here, these are all just system wide settings within Vibe Pro, is the IR sensor. This is for the wireless accelerometer. We have a temperature sensor that you can plug into that, and you select that on if you want to enable that. It captures temperature automatically during routes. You can also choose if you would like to use imperial or metric in your capture. It does warn you that if you're using routes not to mix the two as that will make trends very messy and incorrect. Uh, you're able to change the spectrum linear, linear averaging and you're able to change a lot of defaults that you'll find when you're working within the spectrums. Uh, such as the background color between gray and white, the line thickness and many other things. Um, here is the system calibration. We have two methods. One's device type. This is uh, some pre-configured values we have depending on your device model. It has a picture associated with whatever uh, device you have. And then you pick out your accelerometer sensitivity, either 150 or 25 uh, millivolts per G. And when you pick out uh, your type, as I did here, um, you then hit calibrate, the cal button, and that will recalibrate Vi Pro to use the built-in values for that configuration. You can also use a shaker, a 1G shaker, or manually enter the values you were given when you bought your system from us. This is where you'd go to do that. So you type in the value that you got from us and then hit done, and it's now using that value. But I'm gonna switch it back to the device type calibration here. On the other side of the settings screen, you have time period between routes. This is a little reminder that every 30 days in this instance, it will remind you to take a new uh, set of data. You can set the defaults for number of plots in a report. Uh, this is helpful if you want to have both acceleration and velocity one report. And you also change the high resolution mode. This will close down the app when you do this. You'll have to reopen it. Um, and you'll notice the hierarchy measurements in viewer trends reports are not enabled in high resolution mode. That's at 0.33 hertz. It's only available in single measurement mode. Uh, so that is high resolution mode. And let's change it back to the regular resolution. It'll once again close down the app and you'll have to reopen it to uh, get back into the app here as I've just done. And then you're able to have a default logo for your reports and you can choose from the library or to remove it here. And you can, you can add the option to have a vibration reference page in your report, and then the ability to edit plants in the route. That is enabled, that enables you to move around and edit the route when you're there. Uh, report manager, we will get to later. For now, let's get to the single measurement mode. This is the main screen of this mode. You're able to change between um, what channel you're uh, using. You'll notice green and red indicators throughout this interface. You'll also notice the spectrum on the left as it's zooming in and out. Um, you can pinch the spectrum here. You can also see I'm doing RPM markers at 5,000 and I'm changing the RPM now to uh, 10,000 RPM and you can change it whatever to whatever you want for the RPM markers. Once again, not plugged into the accelerometer, just showing you the features and where they are. So here's the 10,000 RPM marker, that little orange marker you see there. So you can do a lot in this main screen, just getting a preview. And as you see those yellow lines, that was channel two there. And you can change between acceleration and velocity. And you can uh, pause or run it. Uh, that blue line is the highest peak. You have a touch marker that you use your finger to uh, enable the marker. 
Uh, you can clear the markers, you have line thickness variables here, and these options are available in the full spectrum screen that we'll get to Audio soon. Out and uh, you can listen to, to the spectrum with headphones by plugging into the headphone jack on your iPad. You can do bearing um, markers and you can select the bearing model here. You just uh, select which bearing model you'd like. You'd hit the down arrow as I did there to fill in those values or if you want to manually enter the data for contact angle, things of that nature, you could input all those and hit the down arrow and it'll put those values down below. And you'll see on the very bottom of that screen has all the bearing frequencies information there. And you can put bearing markers up at this time. Now on the main spectrum screen, we have most of the controls you saw in the last screen, but this time we're full screen with the spectrum. And uh, instead we've got smaller little uh, bu buttons to, to do things like the the peaks and the RPM markers and the touch touch marker as I'm doing now. Uh, those are found at the very top uh, bar of this uh, of this interface. You're able to change from acceleration to velocity. You can see it changing between A and V there. That's just me tapping A and V. You're able to change between Hertz and CPN as well. Uh, you're able to enter notes by ticking, uh, clicking the little notepad with the, the pencil that uh, will add notes to the top left of the spectrum. As you'll see, test note is now displayed on that screen. You can enter a threshold in IPS. That is the off with the little red line there. I'm doing 0 0.3. Uh, so that, that the button there is the, the little red line up top. And you'll see that uh, threshold marker. That success image saved the photo album was me taking a screenshot by hitting the camera. And then you're able to change the background color from gray to, to white uh, as that, the button next to cancel does that. You are able to also uh, do a manual frequency band zoom. Uh, this is, uh, basically gives you a tight range on what you see in the spectrum. That is done when hitting the manual button on the screen. And you're able to change it to a time waveform view. You're not seeing anything here, but that you just hit the FFT button to enable that. Uh, but uh, when you're hooked up to a cell rometer, you will see um, a time waveform um, show there. And you're also able to enter a manual value. If you're uh, using a thermography camera or something like that, you can you know put a value there for say 60 degrees, and now 60 will be saved as a part of the report and even in trend you'll be able to trend that extra data whatever value it is you are tracking uh, when you hit report it'll save acceleration and then switch it automatically over to velocity and grab both of those you just hit it twice and here we are you see we have um, a machine id we're able to enter a value there we have the date and time we have a map that we're able to pinch and zoom into to see where we are we also have these uh, a camera that enables us to get a photo of what our asset. Right now, I'm just getting a photo of our company logo because I'm not next to any assets. And that is now there in the report. You're able to change the severity based on ISO information that we'll get to in a second. Right now, I'm just entering a little test note that you're able to do. But uh, here's the severity charts based on ISO standards. And I just switched over the spindles and you see those values would change. You're also able to annotate the spectrum. Uh, you're able to hot circle things, uh, write little notes, rotate the spectrum. You're also able to zoom into the spectrum or get rid of the spectrum altogether. Uh, lots of different things you can do here. I'm gonna go back into this to show you zooming in. So you're able to zoom in on the spectrum if you really want to dive into something and do a little bit of annotation on there. And if you hit the refresh button in the corner, that will refresh it. And uh, here is uh, the report. And you can do a couple different things with this report. You can, uh, you can save the report to the report manager as we'll go into in a second. And you can also email that report you just hit whichever one is appropriate. I'm now saving it to the report manager, calling it test one. And I can also email by just hitting that email button. It'll pull up the built-in email app to email that report. So that is that feature of this app. Now let's go into the report manager just to show you uh, where that report ended up and what you can do with it. So let's open up the report manager. 
and inside here you'll see test1.pdf, that's the, the report we just generated. Uh, you have the option, if you hit the little arrow icon, to export that to iBooks or Printer Pro or a myriad of other applications. You'll be able to use the AirPrint uh, to print directly from, from within here. Uh, you're able to pinch in on that printer preview to do some things with it as well. And you can also email directly from the report manager as another option as well. With that, let's jump to hierarchy measurement. This is your route measurement. I've already got a database in here. Uh, it's called Sample Factory Data with a long list of machines. Uh, you can reorder these machines as I'll show you in a little bit here. Uh, but this is the route. This is where you'd go in to take recurring data, to trend data, and things of that nature. Uh, you'll see I've got two H1 points, one for velocity, one for acceleration. You'll see photos of the asset in the bottom left corner. Uh, you'll also, And then when you want to gather new data, you just tap into the uh, point and hit save and back, as I just did. And if I want to grab more data, I'd go into the other one hit save and back. So now I have acceleration and velocity both captured uh, for this uh, measurement. Uh, you're also able, you see in the, uh, to reorder, uh, you just drag up and down after hitting edit. You are able to delete and duplicate uh, uh, assets as well within there. And I can add a new one by just hitting test and then the plus icon. And then that's now at the bottom of the list. Uh, you'll uh, notice, and I'm going to add two points called H1. Um, so I'm going to add both of those. And you'll, it'll warn you, you can see the same exact point, same name. And I'm going to change the second one to acceleration. And then you can modify uh, all these things for a machine point. Um, the F max, uh, the measurement direction, which channel it's gathering it from. You can get a photo of the machine, or you can build one with our, our models in here and the arrows to uh, perhaps give you a better idea of where to put the accelerometer. Depending on the setup, this might be clearer for you. A lot of tools in here to make sure you gather the data at the right point. Uh, so I'm going to save it back so that is now the photo of the machine. Uh, you can pick out the RPM marker if you want those and what RPM those should fall at. Uh, you can pick the bearing model uh, doing um, uh, as we did in the single measurement mode and uh, it'll auto fill those values in. You can pick out which danger threshold you would like. I'm gonna set this to seven Gs and put alert threshold at five Gs, but you can put that at what, uh, what thresholds you'd like. There's also temperature thresholds and the custom value we used earlier in single measurement mode. You can actually put a threshold for that as well if you would like to. So now that's saved and that is how you do settings for each uh, machine point that you are recording. The QR code on the bottom right enables you to quickly jump and do a measurement of jump to any of these machines really easily. And um, that's uh, something you can get from the web app that we'll discuss later in a different video. Um, right now, I'm in the time waveform capture. You can do up to six seconds. You can record this, play it back, and you just uh, hit record TWF in the top right to do that. I'm back in the vibration spectrum, um, gathering more data here. Um, so I can show you in the trending area that data in a second. So uh, you're able to capture both forms within Vipro. Now let's go to viewer trends and reports. We're gonna open up test and you see uh, the measurements I just took. If you tap on one, you can open the spectrum to look at it. You can pinch in and out and manipulate it how you would like. Uh, you can, as I'm doing now, go to the recorded time waveform, pull that up to play it back, and you can also uh, pull up the trend, and I don't really have that good of data in this one, but the trend chart will show you your uh, different measurements and how it uh, goes up and down in relation to the thresholds that you have set up within that, uh, that point that we did earlier. And here's one that has a little bit of movement, but still uh, nothing at all close to the thresholds that are way above in the yellow up there. So uh, you're also able to trend temperature in the custom value you'll see at the bottom uh, to, to see how that changes and adjusts measurement to measurement. 
and you're able to zoom in as much as you want or zoom out just by pinching. Very quickly, I'm cutting to GTI line to import our report into Vipro. So you can hit the share sheet and import with Vipro. This will send that report to Vipro to the report manager uh, for use uh, in a second here. You'll see this, these are a list of the external app reports. This is the alignment report I generated very quickly that we're now gonna use in this machine maintenance event. So if you pull up uh, this, we can hit machine maintenance and you can put misalignment and this is, I'm just gonna write some notes about this being an example. If you click that little arrow, it'll give you the list of reports in that report manager and you can input that. And you can also put a camera image or photo library image for the photo of the repair as, um, and when you hit save and back, it'll show you a little icon for misalignment. I'm now going to jump back in there to show you the different icons that are displayed for first imbalance. You see it there. Uh, next up, we have bearing fault. And finally, we have just a tool, uh, a wrench for other. And these are just some she made events that tells you, hey, your repair was done at this time. This is what happened. And it uh, makes the trend uh, make more sense. Now we're going to hit the reports button on the bottom left of the screen. This will pull up some different options to export your data. The first I'm hitting is generate all plant data. This will generate a hex file with all of the plant data. Um, as it is spending, it takes some time as this is uh, a lot of data and here it is. So all the data in the plant and you can save that or email that out right from within here. Uh, you can also hit view last readings as I did uh, much quicker to pull that up. And finally, there's an option to generate CSV data. And uh, when you click that, it'll generate a CSV that you can use with Microsoft Excel and manipulate the data how you will. Uh, you're also able to export that using email, or as I'm about to do here, I'm gonna hit save data in iPad. It says data saved in local file sharing with iTunes. And you just use iTunes to get to that data. Next up is the database. Uh, this is how you export to the web app. So I've got my credentials there and I just hit export database to GTI. It'll pull up the databases I have access to, the projects I have access to, and it'll warn me before I upload that this will overwrite the data. And I hit OK and it starts uploading that data. You can also import data from the web app using the button next to export. Um, and the data is now exported. You can also connect Vipro to your Dropbox account to both export or import data. And once again, it'll warn you that you're gonna overrate data in Dropbox by exporting. As I'm doing now, there's gonna be a little progress bar, as you see filling up now for Dropbox export. And when that's done, it'll uh, finish that progress bar. And you're also able to import as well if you would like to. Uh, you're able to import Davis from email attachment or email the actual Davis file. It's an SQLite file, and as long as it's under 20 megabytes or so, you'll be able to email it, and you'll see the attachment there. So the email has been text about the database as well as the attachment uh, by Pro.SQLite. Uh, the final feature is reset database and leave blank number measurement points. This is if you want to clean the database of, of older readings to make the file size smaller. It'll warn you about this process and what it does, but uh, the delete uh, and reset database and leave that number is there to reduce file size. So those are all of the features in Vibe Pro 7.3.7. I hope this video has been very helpful in discovering what all these buttons and features uh, do. If you have any questions, you can feel free to contact us at info at gtipredictive.com or call us at 603-669-5993. Thank you.